station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Coming up in the news at noon, calls to conserve water and why many people in the DMV are being asked to watch their usage this hour and how you can help. And later, the future of RFK Stadium, a little clearer this afternoon, what the new move in Congress means for the district and its football team. And another gorgeous day is in store for your Thursday, but all eyes are on this weekend. So definitely keep it here. We'll talk more about that in just a bit. Brittany, thank you. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall. One man is dead, another in the hospital after a shooting at Marvin Gay Park in Northeast D.C. That's near Division Avenue and Foot Street. Shooting happened around 5 p.m. D.C. police have not identified a suspect. A motive is also not known at this time. Well, Prince George's County teenager is facing charges after police say he brought a loaded gun to school yesterday. The 17 year old was found with the gun and illegal drugs at Fairmont Heights High School in Landover. Police say that the gun had an attachment that could turn it into a machine gun. The teen is being charged as an adult. Meanwhile, the school plans to install weapons detectors sometime next month. The district announced that its plans to implement additional security screening at all of its high schools earlier this year. Well, a judge has approved a multi-million dollar settlement in the death of Irvo Ayo, o Otieno. The 28-year-old died while being transferred to a psychiatric hospital earlier this year. He died while in the custody of Henrico County deputies and seven deputies. Three hospital workers were initially charged with his murder. Otieno's family's attorney says the state of Virginia, Henrico County, and the Henrico Sheriff have agreed to pay $8.5 million. And a large portion of Maryland is experiencing a drought right now. And earlier this summer, a drought watch was issued in the state. And that has been upgraded to a warning. Our Lex Juarez takes a closer look. The Department of Environment is asking that people take a look at their water usage and cut back where they can. Now, this graphic here was released by uh, the Maryland Department of Environment that you can see right here. Central region of Maryland is in seven counties there in a warning for that drought. Two of those counties being Frederick and Montgomery County. And then right here, the Western Maryland is still under that drought watch. So very important that people pay attention to their water usage. And there are some simple things everyone can do to help. First of all, it's important to repair all water leaks. Installing low consumption toilets and low flow shower heads can significantly reduce water usage. Now when they're brushing their teeth, it's important to turn the faucet off. Only run full loads of laundry and finally do not pre rinse dishes before putting them in the dishwasher. The average Marylander actually uses 100 gallons of water a day and almost half of that water used by households is used outside of the home. But the good news here is there are easy things you can do outside to save water as well in the yard. Make sure you pull weeds and increase your mowing height to two to three inches. You can also make sure that your sprinklers do not get water on the sidewalk. Have automatic shut off nozzles on your water hoses and you can collect rainwater for reuse in the the garden. Now the state is reminding folks that water conservation is important even when we're not in a water shortage. The more water that we save, the easier it is to navigate during times like these. In the studio, I'm Lex Juarez. Back to you. Weather forecaster Brittany Ward joins us with the latest check on the forecast. And uh, Brittany, uh, we had three nice days to start the week. Will it be four straight? That's the question. Yeah, so today we are going to be seeing beautiful conditions. And then as we head into our weekend, that's when we start to see the rain and the wind return to the DMV. So enjoy this afternoon. A mix of sun and clouds. That will be the trend. Temperatures right now, they are fairly warm out there. 78 currently in D.C. 64 as you head over there to Leesburg, holding on to the 60s as you head further off to Kaiser and Cumberland and overall highs today. They will be in the lower 80s. So yet again, another beautiful afternoon for you guys to get outside and enjoy it. All thanks to high pressure just off to the north. Now we are going to be keeping our eye out on a storm, a coastal storm slowly developing off of the coast of the Carolinas. Now we do have some tropical storm warnings all the way from the Carolinas in effect 
expect to about Maryland. This storm will continue to de develop as we head through your Friday into your weekend, bringing us some heavier downpours, gusty winds, and we could also see some storm surge and some flooding across the DMV as we head into your weekend. So it's very important that you guys stay weather aware as we kickstart the weekend. So taking a look at the next three days today, it's going to be quiet, lower 80s, that mixture of sun and clouds. We slowly start to see those winds begin to pick up as we head through your Friday afternoon as that storm slowly begins to inch closer to the DMV. And then by Saturday, notice your temperatures dip down mainly into the upper 60s. We're going to be seeing that widespread showers as that coastal storm slowly rolls through the DMV. DMV first warn day on Saturday with lots of heavy downpours with the possibility of flooding. So definitely keep it here. We'll talk more about Saturday's forecast and what to expect coming up. All right, Brittany, thank you. DC moving one step closer in the process of redeveloping the RFK stadium site. Well, this comes after a House Oversight Committee approved for the bill to go to full congressional vote. Artosan Fakili outside RFK Stadium with more on how people feel about tax dollars possibly going to the stadium. The committee supported the bill that would allow D.C. have control over the stadium that sits on federal land. But before that, there was a push for an amendment that wouldn't allow taxpayer dollars here in D.C. to pay for the stadium. That amendment was voted down, and now that bill in just a few weeks goes before the full House. The vote by the House Oversight Committee would allow the 170-acre piece of land be transferred to the district. D.C. Mayor Bowser was at the meeting on Wednesday, and she has been pushing for the redevelopment of this site to include more than a stadium. It's expected to also have housing and retail. The failed amendment that said D.C. taxpayer dollars shouldn't go towards the stadium came from Pennsylvania Congressman Scott Perry. Should taxpayer dollars go towards fixing the stadium? Looks like they go towards everything else in the city, but um, I don't know necessarily that taxpayer dollars should go toward uh, maybe some to a, to a certain degree, but it's an eyesore, and being that it's a monument to um, RFK, it shouldn't look like that. Virginia Representative Jerry Connolly was one of the legislators who pushed back on that amendment. This is about the right of the District of Columbia to control its own affairs, including the financing of an enterprise. Maybe that's going to involve football, maybe it isn't. But I don't think Congress should be telling the District of Columbia how it can use its own money. Mayor Bowser is glad that the bill is moving forward towards the full house. By the RFK Stadium, I'm Tosin Fakile for DC News Now. Back to you. Tosin, thank you. How, happening today, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is in the nation's capital to address lawmakers. He's facing questions from Republicans and military leaders about the flow of money into the war against Russia. And we'll have more details on the visit and how it ties into potential government shutdown later this afternoon. And that's coming up at 1245. Also happening today, former Loudoun County Superintendent Scott Ziegler is set to appear in court around 3 o'clock and he's facing three misdemeanor charges stemming from the special grand jury investigation into sexual assaults within the school system. His trial is set to begin next week. Meantime, Loudoun County Public Schools working to be more transparent with parents and the school system's new superintendent held a listening session yesterday. Back in May, the previous superintendent, Scott Ziegler, was fired over a grand jury report revealing the school system failed to handle two on-campus sexual assaults. LCPS officials say the form is designed to address what administrators are doing to move the school system forward. We have a, a new coordinator of Title IX. They've got investigators. We have a new process that's clearly outlined. So uh, we've been taking this very seriously, and we'll continue to take um, our responsibilities in that area seriously. And the superintendent says the listening session gave him clear examples of what parents want. Harris Teeter expanding its delivery service to the D.C. metro area. The grocery chain launched this service in Maryland, but now people in D.C. area will be able to use it also. Customers will be able to buy more than 30,000 items, including fresh produce, meats, and seafood. And you can place your orders on the Harris Teeter website or uh, their app. Customers can also sign up for a free trial of HT Plus membership. That program will give them 30 days of free delivery, double the points on fuel and other exclusive savings. 
Well, looking ahead, millions of people who receive SNAP benefits are about to get an increase in their monthly benefits. Starting on October 1st, payments will increase to adjust to inflation. And according to federal data, SNAP benefits will increase by an average of 3%. And for more information, visit our website, dcnewsnow.com. Heads up, Metro Riders adjustments are coming to eight Metro bus routes in the DMV later this week. WMATA says that the changes will improve safety, reliability, and customer experiences. In the district, the changes will be made to the B2, H2, H4, S4, and S9 routes. The Maryland, Maryland, in Maryland, B21, B22 routes will also be changed. And in Virginia, new stops will be added to the 11Y route changes We'll start this Sunday. Well, stretching your dollar this afternoon, students will start seeing some changes on the FAFSA next year, and it will now expand student eligibility for federal Pell Grants. Central Texas A&M says that the new FAFSA factors in more education-related expenses. The new student aid index will now start at negative $1,500. That's their eligibility index number, and starting that index at a lower number means students' chances of being eligible for Pell Grants will go up. And with the help of parents, students can avoid college debt before it starts. Parents can help find scholarships and set up savings accounts early on. And it's also helpful to explain the cost of college goes beyond the sticker price, factoring in meals and housing. And there's also an option called a Parent Plus Loan, where the guardian takes loans out for their student that, so that the student does not have to pay.